Welcome to the IBM Mobile Application Development webcast series. My name is Roger Snook. I'm pleased to introduce Derek Barron, our Senior Product Manager for our mobile products today, who will take us through the IBM DevOps for Mobile in his presentation today. Questions will be handled at the end of the session. Uh, if you do have a question that needs immediate attention, please just put that into the webcast control panel that you have. Just ask your question right in there, and uh, we can certainly take your question at that point in time. Today's session is re being recorded, uh, and uh, so that you can share slides and recording with your friends and colleagues, all content will be uploaded to both slideshare.net as well as YouTube. Welcome attendees, and Derek, you have the floor. Thank you. Hey, thanks, uh, Roger. Appreciate it. Um, happy holidays to everybody. It's December 18th, and uh, I know, you know, I don't. Uh, depending on what you do, you might. <laughs> I don't know if Roger was suggesting that you uh, wrap this up and put it under the tree or anything, but uh, <laughs> hopefully you'll uh, you'll get uh, some value out of the the presentation today. So. Uh, what I'll be presenting is um, this idea of rapid response to feedback, and, and really it's all about continuous delivery for mobile applications. So let's just jump right into uh, to the content for today. Um, the, the agenda that I've prepared for you is to talk a little bit about this concept of DevOps and what that means and why it's important to those of you developing mobile applications. And then in part two, we'll look at uh, applying lean and agile techniques to the mobile application delivery. In part three, we'll take a look at continuous deployment as a practice, a key practice that, that we certainly advocate and have software that supports it. And then in part four, we'll talk a lot about mobile quality. And I've got a very uh, exciting announcement, and I want to make sure that you're aware of a, of a very special offering that we have in this area. Um, so, you know, I guess some uh, just a, a quick preface that... The, the material I present today is meant to help educate you on some of these concepts, but also, you know, I am presenting some of the products that we do offer and sell. So there's a little bit of, you know, uh, sales in here, but, but the purpose is, is kind of twofold, is to give you some education and also help you understand where our products fit in. So um, I hope you uh, appreciate that context, and, and uh, let's, let's jump into part one with DevOps. So first of all, you know, I know that if you're building mobile apps out there, you're, you're observing and dealing with uh, some of the major technology trends probably every day. You know, we've got uh, you know, social networks and social business, big data, uh, cloud. These are all things that as mobile developers we're aware of and dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, what's critical for those of you that are doing this is, is how do you deliver software that integrates and utilizes these capabilities? I think that's something that we all think about and are dealing with, um, you know, every single day. As we move on to the next chart, you know, one of the things that, that we observe over and over again, and you probably experience this every single day, is just a general, you know, lack of ability to continuously deliver software. So this manifests with, you know, people in the line of business, you know, that, you know, they feel frustrated because it takes too long to get things out the door. Um, the development team is usually these days for mobile is almost always doing you know lean and agile processes, but even as fast as they can go, the problem is the operations team is on a completely different um, time scale and, and frequency. You know they're focused mainly on how to make sure that systems are stable and compliant and, and operate well, and sometimes these agendas just don't really meld together very well. Um, and thus, we have all these challenges that, you know, 70% of budgets are devoted to maintenance and operations, and uh, it takes, you know, a month or two months to deliver even a minor, tiny change in software development, mainly because getting it out the door just takes forever. So DevOps, this concept of DevOps, tries to take a, you know, a feedback-driven approach to, to breaking down these barriers. So it kind of takes the lean and agile practices that we, that we all are aware of and applies it across the different domains uh, or the different uh, stakeholders. So people that are in the business and the line of business, 
uh, development, operations, and even with target customers, the idea is to get a continuous feedback and optimization loop uh, by using, extending these lean and agile practices across the whole life cycle. And that's kind of what you see here on the chart, is that you know, there's continuous testing and continuous release and deployment that span across development and operations. And, and these are some of the practices that you can apply to achieve a, a DevOps uh, approach to you know, delivering continuous software. So that's a little bit of context on what DevOps is. Let's jump right into the application of ad agility and lean into the mobile app delivery itself. And I always like to start with this you know, kind of uh, thought pattern. Um, Jeffrey Hammond is a, an analyst at Forrester and <clears throat> talks about mobile development a lot. And I really wanted to share this with you. This is a view of this concept of systems, you know, and there's three that are represented here that, that we all deal with. And there's a really important concept. So let's start at the bottom and kind of work our way to the top. So first of all are systems of operation. These are things like cars, trains, planes, buses, automobiles, you know, all kinds of things. And if you're building software for those kinds of, of operational systems or systems of operation, what you're mainly what you're mainly concerned about in your life cycle is, is how fast can you get to safety? How early and often can you assure that you know the train and, and plane and, and car software that you're creating is safe and will keep the operators safe and happy and have a great experience? Um, systems of record is sort of what a lot of IT developers deal with traditionally. You know, it's building the customer relationship management system, uh, the billing system, you know, all of those sort of data-centric back office capabilities that we're all familiar with. And the life cycle focus there is time to certainty. Is, is the data there? Is it correct? Is it accessible? Is it secure? Uh, is it organized well? You know, that, that's kind of what you're focused on there. When it comes to mobile applications, we're really thinking about systems of engagement. You know, how are we using the context of the device? You know, it has a GPS, it's got uh, uh, an accelerometer, a camera, um, all kinds of wonderful features that, that you can actually use to create an engaging experience with, with the person that's using the app. And, you know, you see this in games all the time, but even if you think about the, the banking app that you might use or uh, you know, I use, use mine all the time, and, and it's important that it leverage those capabilities so you have this in-context sort of engagement level. And that's what, as mobile developers, we're mainly focused with. We're building systems of engagement, and we care most about the feedback. And feedback is any information that uh, helps us improve. It can be ratings, it can be textual written, you know, feedback, it can be crash reports, it can be all kinds of things that tell us about the engagement and give us the opportunity to make it better. Now, doing this badly has big consequences. So here's a few examples where customers have stumbled a little bit, or not customers, but uh, companies have stumbled a little bit along the way. Um, everyone has an example like this, so I'm not saying that you know eBay or NatWest are, are doing it worse than anybody else. It's just that you know these are some examples from the news where you know, eBay, NatWest, even the Wall Street Journal has stumbled a little bit with their mobile endeavors and they paid the price. You know, there's real business impact when, when this happens. Um, you know, Facebook is, is well known for totally revamping their mobile application because they weren't getting um, their, you know, they weren't getting usage and driving business through it like they wanted. And, and nowadays, you know, they're, they attribute I think the last thing I saw was something like 40% of their revenue is actually driven through their mobile channel now. And they have a wonderful mobile app, as I'm sure all of you are aware of and use. So this brings us to the point that the very best mobile apps evolve rapidly in response to feedback and needs. So here's a great example with uh, Air Canada, uh, a business type of mobile app, right? We're not talking about games here today. You know, you're not building games. You're building, uh, you know, consumer and business apps for your company that engage with people. And so that's what we're talking about. And, and Air Canada is a good example. Uh, with IBM's help, they've increased uh, customer loyalty. They've, uh, whoops, my screen changed. They've um, had an 80% reduction in their check-in costs, and they've had a 50% reduction in the time required to launch new services. Um, so part of this was building a great mobile app and a great experience, but part of it also was the back-end infrastructure that supports all these changes. And you know, by focusing on feedback and understanding what the feedback was in all the different forms, 
they've been able to really build and maintain a, a well, uh, a high quality mobile application. Another example is uh, a number one U.S. digital bank, and uh, you know they estimated early on that you know 40 percent of their future business would actually come from mobile accessibility through mobile apps. And they really wanted a way to build their mobile apps uh, for multiple platforms at the same time without sort of having one team for Android and a totally different team for iOS and a totally different team for, for Windows. It's a challenge to do, but you can actually do that kind of thing with Worklight, which is an IBM solution for mobile development. And they're implementing Worklight now to help them achieve that goal. So let me tell you a little bit about Worklight. Worklight is our, uh, the IBM mobile application platform. And what it's really for is for people that are you know, planning to develop for multiple platforms. And also, it is a multi-tier system. So it, it not only helps you build the client that runs on the phone, you know, the mobile app that runs on the phone, but also the middleware that's needed to do the secure mediation between all your back-end systems. So it's standard-based. It's actually built right on top of the native tools. So if you're currently developing with Xcode you know, for iOS, this builds on top of that. If you're building for Android you know, using the ADT, this in, uh, builds on top of it. And it gives you kind of a, a hybrid programming model uh, that can also build on top of and extend the native functionality. So, it really goes beyond something like Cordova um, that, that you might use in the open source world um, and gives you all of the middleware components as well. So it's very highly rated. Uh, Gartner here actually has recognized IBM and Worklight as a leader in the mobile application platforms. You can see it to kind of highlighted here in the, in the magic quadrant that they have. So here's a, just kind of a reference point. There's a, a lot of different people uh, working on this. IBM has a very strong vision on this and we've been executing on it, making a lot of investment in helping you guys develop really great mobile applications. Okay, so let's talk about more of the process behind the tools. So why is uh, using agile techniques attractive to mobile development teams? And it's a great question because um, in all of the customers that I've worked with and in all the data that you see in the research, almost without fail, uh, you know, 90 plus percent of mobile development teams are using agile techniques like Scrum or uh, lean processes and, and other types of agile processes, um, almost without a fail. And they do this because using agile techniques results in higher quality results, helps you deliver faster, and you're more likely to get the functionality right. So it's an excellent choice um, if you're just starting on mobile development. Uh, the best thing to do I, that I could say, based on lots of other experience, is to start with a mobile pro with an agile process. Now, why is that? So, let's take a look here at uh, a little more data from our from uh, Jeffrey Hammond over at Forrester again. Um, he's kind of laid out this uh, sort of this pattern of a typical app release schedule. And if you look at this, it should look very familiar to any of you who've developed a mobile application. So, we're looking at a year's time frame here and it's broken up into these regular sort of internal sprint cycles. Um, but what's interesting is that uh, the line that you see represents the releases of the mobile app, and they're not regular, right? They're very fragmented, as a matter of fact. You know, in version one, you bring out your MVP, which is your minimum viable product, uh, and as you go over time, you're, you're creating more features and defect fixes. Sometimes you regress, so you notice the little dip here between version 1.2 and version 1.2.1, uh, there was a regression and an emergency patch that was needed. By having an agile process with constant sprint cycles and iterations, you can actually make these regressions and emergency patches more effectively by using your development process and responding quicker to you know, changing feedback. So as a mobile development team, you know, you're not working individually. It's a, it's a team effort. So agile collaboration is really critical. And this is where some of our tools around uh, teams developing in an agile fashion are, become really important. So imagine if you had something like our ALM pro uh, products, which support agile teams, and it can help you do some, some basic imperatives. Number one is to improve quality with lifecycle traceability. So imagine if you had the ability to look at a build that you created, 
um, and see the test results and all the work that went into creating it, meaning that you could take that build and you could see what are all the, the work items that went into it and all the code and versions of code that went into that work. And you could have complete traced visibility across that entire cycle. That's what we offer with our collaborative lifecycle management solution. Number two is to help you accelerate your time to delivery with real-time planning. So, you know, if you're going to respond to feedback, you have to make changes to your plan in real time or almost real time. So the concept in Agile, of course, is that you have a sprint, and the sprint is fixed for a certain amount of time, like a week or two. At the beginning of a sprint, you always take your backlog, and you figure out which ones are you going to do first. Based on feedback, you can do real-time planning to massage that backlog so that what you're delivering better meets customer expectations. And then the third thing here is this imperative around improving your product value within context collaboration. So the reality is that you and your your fellow teammates may or may not be, you know, co-located. Hopefully you're, you've got the luxury of actually being co-located where you're literally looking at your, your developers and, and you've got a dashboard hanging over you guys and um, that's ideal, right? And we've got, there's a lot of customers I work with are able to do that, but not everybody is. And even if you are co-located, it's really useful to be able to maintain in context information about the work you're doing. So if you and I are having a conversation about a new feature, it would be great if we could annotate and document our conversation right within the context of the work that we're doing. And that's what you can do with this in-context collaboration. We offer this uh, capability as an on-premise solution. You can, you can buy and download uh, our collaborative lifecycle management solution. We also offer it online. So this is hub.jazz.net. This is where we offer it hosted as a cloud. It can be a public or a private cloud, depending on what you like. So this means you don't have to download and install software and configure it and maintain it. We do that for you, and you can get it all over Jazz Hub. So um, through the rest of the year, it's actually free for private projects. Um, in 2014, we intend to start charging for private projects, but um, you know, there'll be some different modes you can go there. Uh, the public projects are free and they will continue to be free. So if you've got a public project you want to work on or you just want to try it out, this is a great way to do it. So hub.jazz.net. And our ALM solutions, by the way, are our leading solutions. So uh, here's some uh, data from, uh, from, from uh, the market scope for application lifecycle management. You can see that our solution was rated as a strong positive as compared to other offerings in this space. Okay, let's move on to topic three, which is continuous deployment. And this is really all about a very important practice that we, we really see helping people develop or deliver software faster, mobile applications faster. So here's kind of the basic concept is you want to be able to enact kind of this continuous process of building and testing because what that gives you is very usable builds faster. So kind of the Mickey Mouse diagram here is depicting a scrum process and you're probably familiar with this. but uh, Every time you do a sprint, you're going to have an output. In fact, during the sprint, you'll have lots of builds that you want to test. And so every time you have a, 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 a continuous integration build, you'd like to be able to take that, that build, distribute it onto the device targets that you're targeting, and also the middleware that you might have, install it uh, into the set of emulators or devices that you're wanting to test against, and then perform some automated and manual testing against it. And so this is the idea of taking continuous integration and extending it into continuous testing. It's a very important practice. So let's talk a little bit about continuous integration. So uh, our uh, collaborative lifecycle management solution in Jazz Hub is, is built upon Rational Team Concert, or RTC, as you see here. So Rational Team Concert allows you to uh, you know, uh, perform continuous integration. You can use our build system, or you can actually integrate it with your own build system that you might be using. Um, but it gives you this ant style build script and, and you can integrate with ant specific tasks. We also have uh, custom scripts that help you work with uh, uh, work light and mobile tasks and mobile SDKs. So uh, this gives you a build engine so that you can continuously integrate changes that the team are making. On the next chart I wanted to kind of uh, explore a pattern with you because we see this over and over again. So there's sort of a um, uh, a pattern of people developing mobile applications and what we see is that you kind of have your uh, your systems of engagement which is like your mobile app and this is being deployed rapidly you know rapid deployment cycles 
And then in the middle part, you have typically your cloud-based web, web deployments. So these are deployed frequently, but not quite as frequently usually as the mobile application. And then down below are the systems of record. And the reality is, is that an application, a full system, involves all three of these components at least. And so coordinating the deployment of these into uh, your testing environments and your pre-production and then and in post-production environments is really challenging. So this is where we've introduced deployment automation for uh, DevOps and, and even for mobile DevOps. So this is, uh, you may be aware that uh, IBM acquired a company called Urban Code and we've now uh, released uh, the IBM version of this called the IBM Urban Code Deploy version 6.0. There's also IBM Urban Code release as well, which is, uh, but I'm going to focus here on deployment automation. So we'll focus on Urban Code Deploy. What this allows you to do is to set up a completely, uh, or almost completely, uh, depending on how many manual tasks you have, but the idea is to automate your deployment process, to describe the processes and to use one of our more than 100 plugins to various destination systems uh, to actually automate that process. Now one of the things that we've included that's mobile specific here is integration with Worklight. So if you're using Worklight, which I talked about earlier, you can completely automate the process of deploying your builds onto multiple different environments for testing. So this plugin allows you to automatically deploy your Worklight build outputs right into the Worklight instance that's running on one of your environments. So you might have a a development environment, an integration environment, a test environment, a production environment for Worklight. Those are all distinct different instances of Worklight and all the other stuff you have running, right? So what this automation does is it helps you to automatically deploy from the development environment into those um, as you're making updates and changes. All right, let's go to topic number four, which is really about quality and feedback. So. This is a really important topic and it ties back to deployment. So you might be deploying super fast and hopefully you are if you're using automated deployment. And what you'd like to do is quickly get an assessment of how things are going. So you want to do super fast builds, super fast automated deployments, and then you want to get feedback super fast as well. <laughs> So the feedback you want to get is all about quality and you're looking for, you know, what do mobile testers need? Well, they need to be able to manage the testing that's happening. They need to do some level of manual testing. There's just no substitute for manual testing. Manual testing is important because it actually is the best way to get the human perception of quality. You know, how does it feel? Does it work well? Do I like it? Those are really important things that you can never automate. But there are a lot of things you can automate, like you can set up virtualization, you can automate some basic security testing, you can do performance testing and automate that, and you can automate the mobile UI automation as well. And this is one of the, mo one of the better candidates for automation. So um, we've actually introduced a product here to, do, to help you do this with Rational Test Workbench. Uh, it has comprehensive support for UI automation for Android and iOS, as well as native, hybrid, and web applications. The basic idea is that you record your interactions with your app. You can edit and modify it so you can set up dynamic things like data pools that you're pumping through the test. And then you can run those tests across one or more different mobile devices to validate the you know, regression and functionality that you're wanting to, to verify with the testing. Furthermore, we have technology that helps you actually virtualize the back-end services. So, you know, in DevOps, the idea is that you want to do your testing in a production-like environment, right? So, unfortunately, you don't always have access to production systems when you're not in production. So, um, you have a couple of choices. One is you could go through a, a pretty rigorous and long-running process of getting production data, modifying it, setting up systems that seem like they're production systems, um, investing in those pieces of hardware, making them, you know, seem like you know, production system. It's very complicated. So virtualization is a really cost-effective and effective uh, alternative to that, <coughs> as you can imagine. So service virtualization allows you to actually virtualize all the middleware and back-end stuff that your, your mobile app is talking to and uh, so that you can really isolate the, the client tier and focus on ensuring the quality of the mobile application uh, and test it against production-like virtualized systems in the back end. Now, let's go back to, so, so we talked about automating some of the testing. 
We talked about virtualizing some of the back-end systems. And now let's talk about this whole concept of the perception of quality because here's a problem statement that we see over and over again. A lot of people really want to develop and deliver these, these really high quality mobile applications, but they don't have the confidence to answer some really basic questions. Number one is, how well does the mobile app work? Do customers like it? Does it meet expectations? And what can we do quickly to improve in the next update? These are really hard questions to answer if you don't have a way of getting really good feedback early and often from the process. So let's talk about this brand new product. This is the one I mentioned in the opening. I wanted to share with you. So we have a product we're working on, mobile IBM Mobile Quality Assurance. It's in open beta right now. So if you follow the bit.ly link here, you can actually sign up. And I'd love for you to sign up and start trying this out. It's free. Uh, we've got some, uh, some forum-based support out there right now. We really want your feedback on this because it's, it could be a game changer for you in getting feedback early and often for your mobile apps. So let's talk about the way it works. Here's how it kind of works. Um, let's start with the developer here, uh, item number one in the screenshot. So the developer is basically going to create the application, and then once they have a build that they want to share and have tested, they actually can use the system to distribute the over the air. So you can send that build right over the air and define a set of testers that you want to have test your app. It gets, over, it gets sent by email or other mechanisms to the tester and they just simply, uh, from their device, uh, get access to the build. It gets installed onto their app, onto their, onto their phone, excuse me. Once they have the app, um, Oh, you know what, I, I, I missed something. So one of the other things the developer does is, is they actually instrument their app to include uh, some feedback mechanisms, which I'll talk about in a second. So they instrument the app, compile it, build it, distribute it over the air, and then the tester gets it, and they can start testing it. So as the tester is, is testing the app, uh, you know, if they find a bug or something that they want to provide feedback on, they can shake the app, and up will pop a dialogue, and they can you know, provide uh, textual feedback as well as sort of circle an area on the app if they want to. They can annotate what's going on. And then when they send the feedback, uh, the instrumentation will actually provide a lot of extra information like what is the phone, uh, you know, parameters at that time? What's the phone context? How much memory was there? What was the battery level? What was the network access looking like? Um, you know, all kinds of contextual information to supplement the bug report so that the developer has all the information they need to really understand what's going on. Also, as the tester, as they're using the app, if it crashes, uh, the system will automatically send detailed crash information back to the developer as well so they understand what's going on with, with the device and testing. Um, as the app gets promoted and, and launched, it goes out to actual end users of the app. Um, you can instrument, in that case, for a very lightweight instrumentation. And the end users can do the same thing. They can shake the phone, provide feedback. Um, in this case, it's in-app feedback. So you're not waiting for an app store review. You're actually giving your end users the ability to give you feedback right from within the app. And again, if it crashes, you have the option of getting those crash reports coming back to you if you want to. So this is getting a feedback loop very quickly back to you. You're getting in-app bug reports, you're getting in-app feedback, you're getting crash log, log reporting, and lots of great um, you know, uh, dashboard uh, information here to understand what's going on, to see the crash logs, the comparison of bugs to crashes, etc. So this is a really great way to do it. Another piece that we're adding into the beta, which isn't there at the moment, is sentiment analysis. So this is kind of more for the digital marketer or you know maybe if you're the, the leader of the app, what you're able to do is actually go out and see an analysis of the app store data. And what we do is we look at the app store data and we analyze it by all these different dimensions. And we give you basically a first of all we give you a basic score, you know, a score of, of zero to hundred. How does your app compare to the other apps in your same category? So you get your score, and then you can drill into that and see all kinds of dimensions of information about your app. And actually, you can even, even look at that and compare it to earlier versions of your app or, or even look at it competitors and see how things stack up. So the sentiment analysis is another piece that uh, is, is coming in the beta. It's not there right now, but it will be coming. So I hope you get a chance to try this out. This is 
uh, easy to use, um, really get you some feedback early in the process, and we would love to get your feedback on, on how this works for you. We really want this to be an enjoyable and very useful uh, product for you. All right, so with that said, let me just start to conclude here. So we actually advocate that you combine strategies to reduce your time to feedback. So on the left-hand side, part of it was doing this continuous build and test process. And then if you marry that up with this feedback management that we talked about with mobile quality assurance, you can really dramatically improve kind of your continuous integration and feedback you know, loop. All right, so <clears throat> what did I talk about today? We talked about Worklight as a multi-platform solution for developing apps. We talked about the Rational Collaborative Lifecycle Management Solution, which is for agile development teams. And you've got access to that on hub.jazz.net as well. We talked about Rational Test Workbench, which gives you test automation for the UI. We talked about Rational Test Virtualization Server, which helps you virtualize backend systems. We talked about Urban Code Deploy, which helps you to automatically deploy your mobile builds out onto test systems and get feedback. And then we talked about this brand new uh, mobile quality assurance offering that's in open beta right now. Uh, it helps you really manage the, the feedback that you're getting from testers and users. So with that, um, that's kind of a wrap on what I'd like to present today. With that, I will conclude the call for today. Thank you for attending. And please do look on SlideShare as well as YouTube for the updated and uploaded content. Thanks for joining today.